uh, a very talented unit, and it, it is some more depth than uh, you know what we had some other places. But I think the roster was built that way, and the fact that there's some guys that have some some length, there's some guys that maybe you know on paper you would say they are primarily a slot position. Uh, we try to put guys in a position where they can play multiple spots, um, you know, between all receiver positions. But uh, I like the depth there, and I think it's a depth uh, of talent. So uh, and each guy can bring something different to the table. So that's that's probably the biggest upside to the receiver unit. There's a lot of different guys in there that add something new, something uh, different from each other. And But ultimately, all those guys fundamentally and technique-wise, uh, I think they're going to be all fine just as we polish some things up. Can you break down how some guys are doing for me, like Dalton, uh, Malik, and um, uh, Hunter? Uh, overall, I would say the whole unit is doing, doing fine in terms of just the ability to pick up our offense. Have very few mental errors. Uh, we do have some, uh, but some of the base install that we put in, just overall, they're doing really well. Specifically to those three guys, you know, I think Dalton uh, as a leader, a guy that's played some games, he's doing well. Um, you know, he's a guy that can come in the room. I think he's picking up the, the system fairly, fairly quick. Uh, I think that you know ultimately he he has some straight line speed. He does some things well laterally. He's catching the ball well, and and the biggest thing is that we kind of get spring going. We're in some more padded situations. Just being more of a physical presence would be my message. You know, in terms of what he's bringing to the table. Uh, Malik, he's running well. I know he's played. He's a young player. Uh, he's a red shirt, but he he played in four games, so he has some game time under his belt. He's doing well. Um, I think he's a fluid athlete. Uh, he has some raw talent there, just controlling his body. As he gets stronger in the weight room, I think he's going to be a guy that is going to obviously grow into his body and grow into his skill set and be really good for us. Uh, Hunter, he's fluid. He's smooth. Uh, he's very quick in and out of breaks. Um, just again, body control is something that he's come in and talked about. Hey, coach, I need to. How can I control you know my my upper body in this way and things like that. So technique and and fundamentals are some things that he's going to continue to work on. And but ultimately, the whole group is getting better and, and they're getting great effort. I don't want the sexiest thing in the world to ask about, but how important in this scheme is is run blocking for? Uh, probably is the sexiest thing in the system. If if if, if the run game is rolling, uh, the pass game is going to come and, and, and be an even a bigger threat. And so uh, that's the huge emphasis, you know, from uh, our fundamentals and technique and just being able to work a release off the line versus press. But when it comes to run blocking, um, that's the biggest thing. You know, when you turn on the tape, uh, any game film on any team, if, if you see a running back get to the third level and all of a sudden a corner comes off and makes a play and, and, and you know, it's a 20-yard, 25-yard run as, as opposed to a 60 or, a, you know, a 70-yard touchdown, that's on us on the perimeter on the third level. So the guys have to take pride in their blocking. They have to take pride in uh, their fundamentals of their hand placement and running their feet. But really, at the end of the day, it's about effort. It's about want to and really being selfless in the fact that, okay, yeah, I'm a receiver. That's, that's built into your job description. You will catch passes, but you have to block in the system. And, and, and really, everywhere I've been, no matter what the system was, whether it was air raid or, or, or a pro-style system such as this, the receivers are going to have to block, and they're going to have to take pride in it. On that same note, I don't want to pigeonhole you guys as a two wide, you know, pro style offense right. spread it out too. But how do you convince you know convince kids in this in this era with the air raids and the four or five receiver sets that this is an offense for them to play in? Oh, uh, do you want to win? Right. I mean, bottom line, I mean, that was my message to the guys at North Dakota State, and and they knew it, you know, because they'd been there before me and and longer than I had there. But you know, ultimately, when it comes down to it, if if you're a playmaker. We're going to design ways to get you the football as a skill player. Doesn't matter if you're if you're a receiver that we can put in the backfield, if and vice versa. If you're a running back that can play out as a, on the perimeter. So uh, ultimately, you know, I look at this system as one that it you know you call it the pro style, you call it this, you call it that. We we are built to where we can do multiple things, and it's my first time in a true huddle offense. Uh, can we get into a no uh, you know no back spread situation? Yes, uh, we can pretty much do anything you'd want to draw up uh, it just matters depends on what your personnel uh, affords you to do and so that's really you know us as coaches we're going to evaluate the complete roster um, you know we're going to look at dudes it, on everything you know if we're doing a PAT field goal drill then all of a sudden we tell the receivers hey we're going to go down here and work uh, swoop technique and learn how to uh, learn how to tackle you know we're going to we're going to evaluate the roster as a complete whole roster and maximize our roster and I think that's something that we do really well yeah how do you handle terminology in terms of 
entered in this system? Uh, pretty much my background is you, you change everything. I mean, when you come in with a new system, there's some things that will kind of, um, you know, you'll see there's some overlap to some terms and things, but ultimately everybody's running the same plays. They call them something differently, you know, at the end of the day, you know, and, and that's, that's pretty much what it is. And, you know, if you look across the board as far as offenses and defenses, things like that, guys are going to play cover two, guys are going to play quarters, cover three, whatever their, their, their system allows them to do defensively. And then, you know, even then, you know, you're, you're teaching a kid, hey, we're going to call this a specific name as opposed to what you called it last year as far as a coverage goes. So they're even relearning at times the name of a cover. Um, there are your base coverages that you're going to maintain and keep as tr you know tried and true what that defensive call is. But ultimately, from an offensive standpoint, I mean they're going to learn a, a whole different term terminology. Um, you know, it's places I was where you're giving signals, you're learning sign language essentially, and you're learning a different type of sign language. So uh, in most cases, I would say you change most of the most of what it is uh, as far as the terms and, and, and signals and things like that. There is some overlap where it's, oh, yeah, that's what we called that last year, things like that. But in most, most cases, I'd say we, we change everything 100%.